Hey guys, welcome back to technically my first episode of Nobody Makes It Out Alive. Um, so funny story, we actually had the first episode and a few more recorded. So you guys are still going to get those episodes, but we decided to make this one the first one because I got cheated on. <laughs> and it's kind of a moment right now and I kind of want to reach as many people as I can and have people relate while I can, you know, and it's way this literally happened. I found out like three days ago, so it's still very fresh. So I feel like I am just going to be completely raw and honest with you guys. And yeah, happy first episode. <laughs> so I still want to keep the format the same. So with that being said, let me update you guys on my week. <laughs> um, so three days ago, I found out I got cheated on and Honestly, I've been in a very confused headspace because one side of me is like, oh, my heart hurts so bad. I'm so sad. But then the other part of me is like, good riddance. Like, this is a blessing in disguise. Um, and I haven't really been letting myself wallow. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I have cried. I've cried a lot. But, um, you know, I'm just going through the motions. I, you know, like when you get your heart broken, you don't eat for like three days a week. <laughs> That's kind of where I'm at right now. And at the same time, I'm trying to do my best to take care of myself and make sure I'm healthy. Um, but it's really hard when like you feel like you physically can't do it. So I have been really trying to take care of myself and see my friends and not be so alone and talk to people. Talking to people has helped me a lot. And this episode is also going to help me a lot. I feel like talking about it is very helpful. So Honestly, that's really all I can tell you happened during my week because that's all I can remember. <laughs> did, the rage, did the rage room help? Oh, yeah. And I went to a rage room with my friend Alex um, and it was honestly so healing. <laughs> like, <laughs> I went yesterday and I'm telling you guys like my body is so sore. Like every time I move like a bone cracks. I'm like, ah. <laughs> Wait, what song was that Eminem song? Guns blazing. Yeah. I've been sleeping with the enemy. Mockery. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. He f***ed his ex, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to like talk about how you found out so i'm sure you guys have seen the video it's gone pretty viral which i was not expecting which is also kind of scary for me because i don't want to be like the girl who got cheated on <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so basically how i found out was he had taken me to his brother's baby shower knowing that she was going to be there honestly dude like i'm uncomfortable going to that baby shower because she has like continuously kept texting him and like disrespecting the relationship but it's also like i don't blame her at all like if you're giving her the room to do that that's fully your responsibility you know like she doesn't owe me nothing like you owe me loyalty she doesn't but so she knew she knew yeah he was in a relationship bitches will be bitches, will be bitches you know so it, I it is <laughs> mature to like not blame it on her you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I don't blame her at all. Yeah. As much as I, like, have hatred for her, too. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, yeah, <duh. laughs> Like, I don't blame her at all. Like, she doesn't owe me nothing. He does. So, um, yeah, he took me to that baby shower. And knowing she was going to be there, which is really, like, so much audacity. <laughs> um, like, you're so confident you're not going to get caught, which is so funny. So, um, actually... Um, the whole night, like, I was really uncomfortable, and, like, I could see her, like, looking at me and, like, looking at him, and I saw her, him looking at her, and I was, like, something is very off here. Like, my intuition was, like, speaking. And so, tell me why, like, a day after the baby shower, I get an anon, anon oh, my God, an anonymous <laughs> DM on Instagram from, like, an account that has zero followers, zero posts, zero following, and it's saying something like, hey, I'm an old acquaintance of girl's name. And I just want to let you know, like, she's been proudly bragging about still sleeping with your boyfriend. And if I were you, like, I would want to know. And at first, like, I thought it was her and I just laughed it off because, like, she's been trying to get to him. Yeah. So I was like, I literally went up to his mom and I was like, ha look at the message I just got. And then I went up to him and I was like, ah, look what your stupid ex is doing. Like, ha 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 ha. <laughs> and then I sat down and I was like, wait. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> i was like wait okay why am i like trusting him so fast like why am i believing this so easily and so literally for the next two days i just kept like pressing him and pressing him i was like is it true like is it true like my, my intuition was like on point at that time like and he was telling me and all of his family were telling me like no like she's literally crazy like we all hate her like she's such a like um what's the word like Path pathological liar. Oh, oh pathological liar, yeah. like all of him and his family were saying like she's such a pathological liar like she would fully do that and like in my head i'm like what 25 year old woman 
would make up a lie and go as far as to tell people at the baby shower and make an anonymous Instagram account. And so I'm like, no, like, he literally did it. And, like, I knew. And I was drilling him for, like, two days straight. And, y'all, he put his hand on a Bible and swore to God. Oh, he's going to hell. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, like, have fun, babe. (laughs) He literally put his hand on a Bible and swore to God. He was like, I did not cheat on you. You're my soulmate. I love you. Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, she's crazy. It's always the guys who say, my ex-girlfriend is crazy. Like, no, babe, it's you. Also, he would talk so much (laughs) about her while we were dating. And I literally made a joke one time. I was like, let me find out you're cheating on me with her because it's always the girls that the guys talk about yeah. no it is it's like they have to make a point that yeah. it's yeah. like i hate this person so much yeah and it's like like why he would talk do you even about tell her, me that her family like call her all these types of names like say that he just used her for sex and like oh oh yeah oh my god yeah wait he said that he used her for sex yeah yeah well he, they didn't even date they were like a talking stage <gasps> but i just say x because it's easier like yeah i'll yeah. see her on the streets <laughs> was, <laughs> no, it, wait, that's my <laughs> was it yeah. like right before you guys started dating or yeah they ended things right before we started dating interesting yeah so um then i told him i was like honestly dude the only thing that will give me peace of mind is if you call her and press her about it and her reaction will tell me everything i need to know and so we went to the mall and i was like can we do the call now can we do the call now and he was like pushing it off so bad like avoiding the hell out of it and i was like why are you avoiding this like why why are you like let's go do the call go in the car let's go call her and so he calls her and he's like, why are you telling people we're still sleeping together? Bro? Like, you're crazy. And she was like, what? You're crazy. Like, we are. Like, we did or we are. I don't even remember what she said. Like, just tell her, like, the cat's out of the bag, blah, blah, blah. And so I took the phone and I was like, girl, if you wanted to be, like, mature and a woman, like, you would just tell me straight up. Like, I wouldn't be hearing it from all these other people in anonymous Instagram accounts. Like, just be grown and tell me. So what is going on? She told me everything. She was like, Um, he texted me at midnight and said he wanted to apologize for like how he left me and I came and I hopped the fence and he wanted me to see his new cat our cat by the way that I got not got but like convinced him to keep um and yeah and then she told me they had sex and then I look over at him and he's just like silent like staring through the windshield and I just knew I was like okay so I was wearing his jacket I get out of the car his car And I throw the jacket, (laughs) I get into my car and I drive off. And then I'm like, I'm not going to lie. Like I was going through it like so much and I'm like parked on in a different parking lot and I'm just like crying, like literally like had to throw up on the side of the road. And then I was like, no, I need to go like talk my to him. And um, so I drive back to where he was. We park and roll the clip. (laughs) 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 Um, so yeah that's how i found out and actually today's topic goes so well with this whole situation like today's topic is all about identity and identity crises and i'm not gonna lie i'm low-key having one right now (laughs) so brina texted me last night she's all i think i'm gonna get a motorcycle (laughs) (laughs) she was like i need 15k fast i was like let's talk about this in the morning i literally texted her i was like i need to make 15k in a week (laughs) (laughs) is that how much it is well the one that i want but they usually range from like eight to ten and then we were talking about it this morning and she's all i don't know how to ride one i don't have a license (laughs) And she was bought one yesterday. I literally, me and Alex went to a motorcycle shop after the rage room and I was fully going to buy one. But the only thing stopping me was like, he drove his car. I drove my car. So how am I going to get it home? I also <laughs> don't have a license. I've never drove one myself. I've been on the back of many, but I've never driven it myself. So I'm like, okay, like, do I have to tow it home? <laughs> That's honestly so good. Cause like most girls are like cut themselves really bad bangs or like do something really bad. And you're like, I just like contemplated buying a motorcycle and then left. <laughs> like I'm good. No. Cause I've always wanted one and I'm like, okay, well if I was spending all this money on him, like let me spoil myself. Yeah. Like, right. Okay. Also, so. can we mention the fact that he's five years older than you and five, four. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's literally 24 and I'm 19. And I was like, it's crazy yeah <laughs> how you happen to like, be the more mature one at yeah. your grown age at your grown age right yeah um it's a good lesson though like everything's a lesson honestly i'm more upset like i'm more mourning like so all that money that could have still been in my savings <laughs> um but yeah it is what it is like honestly 
the biggest less or like what my biggest realization through this was a huge wake up call like i've literally for the past month have been asking the universe like i i just want like i want a new life like i need some change to happen in my life like i need blessings to come my way and i was thinking like this happened because when you ask the universe for something like it's gonna make the most drastic changes in your Mm -hmm. life because how am I going to want that life, but then have people around it who can't match that energy of my new life, you know? So right. I'm really making room for better things to come. And as much as it does hurt, like it's very fresh. Like my heart is still very heavy, like recording this podcast. I wasn't even going to come in today. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like as much as I'm portraying like, oh, I don't give a fuck. Like I give a fuck. Like I loved him, you know, but with that, like he means nothing to me anymore. He literally, I know a lot of the girls who get cheated on can relate when I say like, once you find out his dick has been in a, inside another girl, like, it's ew. Okay. Like, yeah. it's, like, ew. Like, <laughs> never again. Like, yeah. you're disgusting. Um, I'm really happy, though, that you have that mindset because a lot of girls do go back because yeah. they, they're, you know, might not be in the place where they're strong enough to say no. Yeah. And I'm just really happy that you have the support system to, you know, yeah. confide in everyone. And a lot of girls yeah. get cheated on and they don't tell anyone yeah and yeah no hate to those girls but it is actually so crazy to like be in that mindset where it's like yeah he cheated with a few girls but we worked it out and it's like what did you work out and i'm not gonna lie (laughs) i'm not gonna lie i've literally taken back a cheating ex before like i've been there like Like, i get it and like i don't blame you guys like sometimes like that's all you know and sometimes you just have to keep going back until you hate them yeah Yeah. and like fortunately like i've been through it already to where i'm like yeah no i'm not even like i just have to thug it out like as bad as it hurts but all also, I'm not even a lie. Like, part of me yesterday was like sitting on my couch crying, and I start googling. I'm like, how to know if I should take my boyfriend back after cheating? Like, fully knowing I'm not gonna take him back, yeah. but like, just the part of me that really loved him and like would die for him gen- at the time. F- that man now, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but like, it was just so hard for me to believe mm-hmm. that he could do that to me, and like, my love for him was so genuine and ran so deep, and it's just it's hard to forget about in two days, no matter how much hatred or rage I have in my heart for him right now, you know? So right now I'm just more in a place of really trying to take care of myself, my mental and physical health. So that's just where I've been at. I feel like you're also reflecting though on your relationship in general. Like we were talking last night and you even mentioned like, yeah, I I knew my relationship was toxic, but you're not seeing that until you're out of it. Like you're yeah. not coming to terms with it. My my issue during the relationship, I think, was I was looking a lot at the potential that he had and that I knew during the relationship, I was like, why are you sticking to his potential? I would be talking to myself like in the mirror all the time, <laughs> like potential. <laughs> like, yeah. He, yeah, he would be what I wanted him to be if he really loved me. For and th- me, and then it makes you feel like kind of bad. You're like, yeah. oh, I know what he can be. And like, he can't really afford things right now. Like, yeah. I want to see it through and like yeah. be there for him. But, yeah. but potential in a relationship. Yeah. means nothing mm-hmm. yeah exactly like you just have to take it for what it is really like when someone is with you and they're displaying all these red flags like you literally just have to take it as what it is no matter how much you love them no matter how much you want to be like quote unquote ride or die it's just you literally have to take it for what it is and it's so hard and i get it because i didn't leave until the universe literally made me <laughs> so yeah, yeah. and, and the, the blessing is you know it could have been two years down the line you could have been married you could have been living together like it's such a blessing guys we were literally about to move in together like god bless amen but now i found like a super sleigh three bedroom plus loft bathroom close to the office (laughs) is it yeah oh thank god yeah oh yeah so it's looking up for me right now honestly um i see a lot of hope for myself in my future without him Mm -hmm. and I'm really proud of myself for how I've been handling this, honestly. And yeah. Yeah, not to be all like woo woo, but like the universe really is like, all right, you you did the thing we asked you to do. Like, here's a perfect apartment for you. Like, exactly. there you go. Exactly. Like, yeah. Exactly. And, yeah. you know, an outsider looking in, like I didn't know him very well, but knowing Verena very well, it was like the energy was sucked out of you. Like, oh, yeah. he definitely drained you. Yeah. And you can tell. Yeah. I was, it was also like the thing that kept me around was we were in a toxic relationship. I'm not going to lie. Like we would be fighting all the time, but it was like three days out of the week. We were super happy and Mm -hmm. super loving on each other. But then 
the other four we like literally hated each other and like wanted to choke each other out so like um which is me, not normal guys yeah it's not normal <laughs> <laughs> and like to me i was like okay well the good moments are really good like if we can be good like this like we we can reach the level where we're not fighting anymore and we can have those good moments all the time i do want to say though before we transition into the actual topic of this episode i'm not talking about this to make everybody hate him i'm not because that's what a lot of like his friends and some of his family were saying like i'm making him look bad blah blah, blah which number one i'm it's not my response response it's not my responsibility to protect his image anymore like he made himself look yeah, bad yeah <laughs> Um, but I'm not talking about this to make anyone hate him or send him hate. Like I, I honestly, like here, he knows what he lost. He's probably already going through it. Like, I don't, I'm not asking for you guys to go like be vultures or anything, which by the way, your comments have been actually really funny, but <laughs> <laughs> wait, I actually want to read a few of my favorite, but continue. no, they're so good. Yeah. But, um, honestly, I'm just, I'm really just talking about this and wanting to talk about this and making this the first episode because it's so fresh and a lot of the comments were saying like Verena you're honestly helping me so much to move on with what just happened to me and the way you handled it is the way I wish I could have handled it and honestly like I'm also really proud of the way I've been handling it and my mindset through all of this and I really just want to help the girls who are a either going through this now or b have been through it and not over it um luckily for me the relationship was only like four months so it's not gonna be it's not it's not really a loss like not, not much time was taken from me but you know it is still really hard when you're pouring that much love and time and effort and money into somebody and it is heartbreaking you're entering your era of healing mm -hmm. growing mm -hmm. you know you had a crazy end to your year you dropped out of school we started this podcast we're starting a ton of new projects and i think merch you, coming soon my i'm moving into a new apartment you um, asked the universe you said new life they're like yeah yeah Here, bitch. Literally. and you weren't able to put your all into everything because you were very distracted yeah. and you know that energy was being sucked from you so yeah. i think focusing on yourself is going to be the best yeah. thing like self-love is the best type of love mm -hmm. exactly my love for him was so genuine and ran so deep that I can't just forget about that in three days, you know, but I am slowly losing it. You know, I every time I see him or imagine him, I imagine them together and it just makes me 10 percent less love, 10 percent less love each time. So I'm slowly getting there. And I was saying earlier, like I loved him, but I do love myself much more. So honestly, this is going to be. A long journey <laughs> but i'm glad that some of you guys can relate and go through this with me and yeah a lot of you guys were asking how i found out so that's why i wanted to get into it i'm i'm literally not dragging him i'm not saying anything false this is literally what happened and it is what it is and i'm not coming for anybody's neck before someone tries to take me to court or something so. <laughs> right. he doesn't deserve the privacy like when you fuck someone over like this like everything's off the table yeah it's not my it's not my job to protect him anymore so but yeah moving on to identity <laughs> self-identity <laughs> self crisis is um <laughs> we all, as always we have a few questions for verena um what is something you're not proud of doing and why i'm not proud of doing mm -hmm. um maybe it's affected <laughs> your identity a little Something I'm not proud of doing is neglecting so much of my life and responsibilities to cater to somebody else's. That's fitting. <laughs> yeah, that is a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I feel like a lot of girls relate to that too. Yeah. Like you also have this, I like almost like motherly instinct to like yes. take care of someone. I can fix him. Yeah, yeah. These men are like children. Yeah. yeah. Like, he was five years older than you and you were taking care of him. You were babying him. In you every were aspect mentally, physically, financially, like everything. You were taking food out of your mouth to feed his. Like God. literally, literally that song, Holy Grail. You take the food out of my mouth <laughs> and I watch you eat it. <laughs> like stop babying men. Also, yeah. guys, one of the new projects we were talking about is not singing, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually going on tour this year. Singing lessons on the way. Just me and Mackenzie in the crowd. We're like, well. <laughs> okay. So the next question is, 
what is your favorite song of all time and why? Paparazzi. I, I knew you were going to say that. I think everybody knows that. <laughs> Wait, I remember you said about the playlist story how she was like, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. And she like, turned on paparazzi as the walkout. Yeah. She's like, there we go. She asked the people and the, the producers or whatever, people backstage, like, you have to play paparazzi. And they they played it for her as she walked yeah. on stage. It made her feel so much better. Yeah. Um, What part of your identity are you the most proud of? Um, Honestly... As much as this whole being cheated on has broken my heart so badly and like part of me is like, oh, I'm never going to love again. Like, I know that's not true. And I think the thing of my identity that I'm most proud of is I can say wholeheartedly I am such a loving person and I know that I will like I'm not letting bad experiences and bad people take the good out of me. And I can see myself loving again and I can see myself doing nice things for someone I love again and Honestly, I, I guess just my optimism is something I'm really proud of myself for. Also, I feel like your just compassion towards people. Like, I was going to say the same thing. Like, just you're the most loving person ever. And no matter what's going on, Farina has the capacity to not be negative, which yeah, is crazy. Really like, hard to do. You would think someone who got cheated on three days ago would be like, I'm yeah. not working for two weeks and, you know, I'm going off the grid and Farina yeah. was calling me and you know telling us everything and being like i'm still gonna come in and film like on a normal schedule like she's still working yeah like she's not letting the sadness affect her I, the people yeah. around her which is yeah. crazy because i'd be like i have shit to do and i have responsibilities and i already let him take too much time out of my life so why am i gonna waste more time being sad and feeling sorry for myself you know like i got yeah. shit to do and it's gonna get done girl yeah <laughs> also not to bring this up again but not only like just compared to other influencers but actually as a person like you are a really good person like so cheesy but yeah it's like not for show yeah it, it really isn't <laughs> How do you keep your identity as someone in the limelight? Um, okay, so I think a lot of people have this um, idea that in order to be an influencer, you have to act a certain way. You have to portray a certain image. And I'm going to tell you right now, and I'm sure as viewers, you guys can tell like when you're watching like a YouTube video or a podcast or just someone talking, like you can tell when they're acting, like you can tell when they're not being genuine and you can tell when they're not being themselves. And personally for me like when I'm watching that and I can tell like it turns me off towards the video I'm like girl just be yourself so I think honestly just come in with your truest self your your own personality because originality is what everybody loves and looks for in an influencer you know so I think the biggest part for me is just I've changed a lot over the years and I obviously have gotten a lot of comments like oh I miss the old you I miss the old you but in a way I miss the old me too but the old me was very naive and a little girl and xyz you know so um i haven't been afraid to stick with my current personality and my past personality and my future personality like i'm going through the motions of growing up and becoming a new person every day and changing every day and learning more every single day and i think as a youtuber i've always brought you guys along with my life daily and just being who I am and like showing you my struggles and my winnings. Um, so I think just, I'm, I've just been myself. Do you think you could choose your own identity? Um, yes and no. I think you can aim for the person you want to be. Like, let's say I want to be independent. I want to be successful. I want to be kind. I want to be loving. I want to be optimistic. You have to work for that. It's not going to happen overnight. And in order to be that, you have to do a lot of reflection and work every single day to rid yourself of those qualities that you want to change or dislike in order to obtain those new qualities about yourself that you really want to be and the person you want to be. It's kind of what I was saying earlier is like when you're asking the universe for a change in a new life is there might be drastic changes. There might be small changes because how are you going to learn how to handle your new life with your past experiences? You know, you have to learn to out with the old and with the new literally so yes i do think you can choose your identity if you don't like the person you are you can put enough work in to be the person you want to be so i kind of forgot that this was the first episode so let me reiterate what this whole podcast is about and kind of the cool part where i get to integrate you guys into it so nobody makes it out alive is about figuring it out together i love giving advice i love talking about life those were my favorite types of youtube videos to make 
Um, so I thought it would be really cool to make long formatted podcast episodes and bring on special guests for certain topics like mental health. I'm going to bring on a therapist for plastic surgery and being insecure. I'm going to bring on a plastic surgeon. (laughs) Um, and yeah, obviously I'm only 19, so I can't give all the best advice in the world. So it's really cool that I'm going to have licensed professionals and, and some of your favorite influencers to also come in and talk about their life and some parts of it that you may not know about or be curious about. Um, so with that being said, I hope you guys take something from this whole podcast and this episode and let's learn and grow together. You know, our common denominator is we all bleed red. We're all in this together. We're all trying to figure it out day by day. Like I am fully convinced that nobody knows what they're doing in this life and we're all just winging it every single day. Um, I'm really good at pretending, (laughs) so I'm, I think I'm doing a really great job at pretending like I know what I'm doing with my life, but truthfully, I wake up every day and I'm like, what now? (laughs) Um, and I think a lot of people can relate to that. So let's figure life out together. Let's do this together. And with that being said, every episode, there's going to be a segment where I have you guys call in and leave voicemails relating to the topic, which I usually post on my Instagram story once a week, like telling you guys what the topic is and to call in and leave a message at the number 323-989-1746. I will be choosing some of those voicemails to include in the podcast and give you guys advice and listen and help you guys out. And if I can't, then we are bringing a professional on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, with that being said, I chose some voicemails about identity crises today and let's get into it. Hey. Just calling in to get your advice and thoughts on the idea of growing up and kind of transitioning into adulthood with social media. I feel like there's a constant feeling around just not being able to achieve the best you can. Like there's a never ending to do list, um, an endless, you know, thought on, you know, how to become a better version of yourself to you have to do this and such and such to achieve such and such. And yeah, just your thoughts on anxiety surrounding how to better yourself. Um, okay, so honestly, I'm gonna tell you right now, most of social media is fake. And the best thing I can tell you is to not compare yourself because Everybody puts out the best version of themselves. Nobody puts on the bad days um, other than that video I posted. (laughs) But um, most of the time I, I, I post the good parts. I post what will make people go, wow, like her life is so cool. Like I don't post like I hate my life today and I want to stay in bed all day. Like I never, you know, like as much as I am transparent and real with you guys, like it's embarrassing sometimes and it's hard to be vulnerable like that with so many people watching and I'm sure so many other influencers can relate. Um, everybody is on their own timeline. So I'm not even gonna lie. Sometimes I look at other influencers my age and I'm like, Oh my God, like how do I do that? Like how do I get on their level? How do I get that brand deal that they got? And literally comparing yourself is the worst thing you can do because Why do you think you're not good enough to achieve that as well? Why do you think that that won't come to you? It's such a limiting um, mindset and it's it puts you back so far because if you it's like change your perspective, change your thoughts. The way you think brings so much or can remove so much out of your life. Reframing your thoughts is really important. So maybe instead of being like, oh, why can't that happen to me? Or like, why is this person so good at that? And I can't do it. It's like one day I'm going to get really good at that and maybe I can even be better at that than this person or maybe one day I'll get a better opportunity than this person um I'm gonna do the work to get me there um reframing your thoughts is really important and I think it's very internal and there's a lot of work to do there but it's definitely doable and just be patient with yourself like I said everybody's on a different timeline um I learned about this designer when I was in fashion school. I forgot who it was, but this super famous designer, you guys are probably, some of you guys are probably wearing him right now, um, (laughs) dropped out of medical school when he was 40 and he had $10,000 in his bank account. And at 50, he opened that designer and it was a small little shop and it took off and now it's still famous. I think he's deceased now. I'm sorry. I really wish I could know who I'm talking about, but I just remember- I just remember hearing this story in class and be like, wow, that's actually really inspiring because he took such a big leap after being in medical school and he's 40 and like 
it worked out so good for him and it's still a successful line to this day people are posting about it people are wearing it Giorgio Armani Giorgio Armani yep <laughs> you mid type I'm like <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so that I learned a lot from that lesson in class I was like wow like everybody really is on their own timeline because some other designers like Coco Chanel started from birth and learning how to sew from her mom, you know, and um, really everybody is on their own timeline and Coco Chanel and Giorgio Armani are pretty much on the same level now, I would say. Some people might favor one over the other, but they're still both as successful and they still both made a lot of money and they both did what they dreamed of doing, you know. One just took longer than the other. So I would say really it's really important to just be patient with yourself and everybody's on a different timeline. And the internet for some reason is so obsessed with success at a young age. And I think that really truly comes from TikTok. Um, and a lot of people's aspirations are like, well, all these kids are getting famous so fast. And you know, what am I doing at, at the age 18, 19? Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's just not real life. Yeah. And social yeah. media is a highlight reel like exactly people yeah. are not honest about what's going on behind closed doors the most successful people ha have different personalities online exactly. and yeah everyone's just so obsessed with success at a young age and it's like kim kardashian i don't think was even successful until she was like 30 you're away like, didn't make her first dress until 45 yeah like everyone thinks their life is over at 25 for some reason and that's just not true so just try and not let that pressure get to you mm -hmm. thank you for calling in and i wish you luck with trying to figure out your path and the anxiety surrounding that and it gets easier so just be patient with yourself girl love you hi marina this is Jaden, and um lately i've been dealing with losing friends and trying to figure out like who my real friends are and being okay with being alone and you know just finding myself instead of being somewhat like being there for others I guess and being there for myself more so I was wondering what do you do to learn who your real friends are and just kind of learn to be alone and with yourself and be okay and find yourself so yeah Hi, Jaden. <laughs> um, thanks for calling in. Um, the first thing I want to say is it's okay to be alone. And I think you should reframe your thinking into from I'm lonely, I'm losing a bunch of friends to I'm alone in solitude and I'm okay with that. Um, being alone is actually a very beautiful thing. You get to learn so much about yourself and improve yourself daily. Um, losing friends can be really hard. I honestly think friendship breakups are worse than relationship breakups so i get you it's really hard especially because with platonic love it's so like beautiful and raw and like i would do anything for you like you're like family now you know um i think people definitely have more um anxiety when it comes to romantic love than platonic love because with platonic you don't really see it coming you don't see like an ending in those friendships and what I was saying before is in order to have the life you want, not everybody is fit to be in the life that you want. I say you should be thankful because people removing themselves from your life or whatever the circumstances is of how you're losing those friends is, I think, a blessing. Unless it's like someone you really, really love and you guys have a good friendship and it's rekindleable. Is that a word? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but also losing friends Revival. is just making room for more. Exactly. Yeah, the uni you said you lost a friend too. Like the universe really is like, yeah. damn. You you don't life, bitch, go yeah. ahead. You're going to yeah. be like blonde tomorrow. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh no, I'm getting my, I'm flying to Arizona on the 17th for a new hair. <laughs> like, of course you, you are. Like, <laughs> you don't know how many people are waiting to love you. Yeah. You have not met a lot of people that you are going to love and will love you yet. And that's so cheesy. And you've probably seen it on like a stupid Instagram quote probably. But like, it's so true. Where you kind of have to stand with this too is this friend hurt me or this friend and I are falling off or this friend and I aren't just on the same page of life anymore. And I'm going to find someone and more friends who will be on the same page as me and have the same ambitions and goals and like just be there for me and for me to be there for them. And also I want to like say... um like I think your friends are like th your friends are a reflection of who you are in a way so if that's not resonating with you and your identity is 
good riddance, honestly, like out with the old and with the new. I don't know how many times I'm going to say that in this episode, <laughs> but it's really true. Like in order to be the person you want to be and in order to have the life that you want to have, it's okay to take losses. And I think, sorry, like I keep speaking from my own personal experience, but I think the journey of going through bad times is much better than getting the good right away. Um, I think you literally have to look at life as a game because it is. When you start a new game on like, um, what's a game? Sims. Sims. Like a yes. <laughs> yes. When you start a Sims game, you don't start with so much money in your Sims bank account. You don't start with your Sim having fresh highlights and <laughs> XYZ, you know, like you literally have to work up to getting to your Sim there. Nobody starts life and ends up with the end goal right away. You have to go through hardships. You have to go through losses. You have to learn through learning experiences. And hopefully, if you learn from it and grow, you will get to that end game with fat pockets and fresh highlights and long lashes, X, Y, Z. But it's really a learning process. And I, I really want to reiterate, do not skip through the bad times. Don't ignore the bad times in your life and you just want it to be over with. As much as it might suck, like... You really have to sit in this and take it all in so that you can be and you. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. We also did a friendship episode. So if you like have more uh, color on friendship, I think we do dive in a lot more mm -hmm. into kind of the process of losing friends in that episode. So definitely stay tuned for that. Yeah. Hi, Marina. It's Danny. I've been a supporter for a really long time, so I wanted to call and ask for some advice. Um, I recently moved out of my parents' house, and I moved in with my boyfriend, and my parents are really not supportive of that decision. So um, it's definitely caused some turmoil in my relationship with my parents, but moving out is something that I've been wanting to do for a really long time, not just with my boyfriend, but move out in general. Um, so I wanted to get some insight on how to kind of get over that part of knowing that you really, really want something. And then once you get that, it's a little bit conflicting because things with your parents aren't the best that they were. Oh, hi, Danny. <laughs> um, so first of all, I'm going to say congrats on the new place and finally doing what you have always wanted to do. Um. This is hard because as your parents, they're always going to have worry and concern for you. And is she making the right decision? Like, should she really be moving in with her boyfriend? And I think you just have to really sit and think, like, would they still feel this way if I moved out on my own? Or is it just more of me moving in with my boyfriend? And speaking from personal experience, when I was going to move in with my ex-boyfriend, um, my parents were very against it just because that's not really, like, a thing in my culture. Like, moving in together out of wedlock is just, like, question mark, you know? So that's just my parents' reasoning. I'm not sure of yours. Um, but looking back, my parents really were just concerned and wanting the best for me and, like, making sure I'm making the right decision. And I think there is a lot of concern that comes in with, like, okay, like, moving in together is a big commitment, and are you going to turn into a wife without being a wife, you know? And... I guess you just really have to set some strong boundaries both with your parents and your boyfriend to make sure that this situation works out for all parties involved and all parties that have a say in this or don't have a say in this and just are worried, you know. Um, I don't know if they're being like, uh, uh, like it's a little bit vague, so I don't know if they're being like helicopter parents and just mad at you because you moved out or they just don't like the idea of you living with your boyfriend, which genuinely I can understand. Um boundaries are going to be very important in this situation and especially with yourself you have to be really honest with yourself and I definitely think it's going to be a learning experience for you your boyfriend and your parents um I would say for now it is your life if this is what's making you happy and this is what's working out for you right now thug it out be happy do what you want to do um and if it doesn't work out you know it's probably a year lease so after the year lease just get your own place you know just Right now, don't let the turmoil take away your happiness of being in a new place with someone you love. So that's really all the I wish I could give you more, but it's such a tough situation because I do see both sides. And as as your parents, like they really just do care about you. Mm -hmm. I don't really know the context or your relationship with your parents before this, but 
just try to remember that your parents love you and they're really just looking out for you. So try not to be mad at them, even if they're mad at you. Just you need to sit down with them and tell them like, hey, like I'm growing up like you might not agree with the decisions that I'm making, but this is what I want to do. And I have to make my own experiences and learn from those. Maybe it's not the way you guys would have done it, but it's how I'm going to do it. So you just have to be stern and set boundaries with all parties. So. Yeah, I hope you get it figured out. I'm sorry. Love you. Enjoy your new place <laughs> with your boyfriend. And her parents are, everyone's parents are always going to have their best interest at heart. Mm-hmm. Like, they're not going to do something intentionally to make you upset. Like, mm-hmm. they're doing it for a reason and they'll get over it. Like, yeah. they're, I'm sure you just moved in. I think she mentioned in the call. So once, you know, time passes and they see how happy you are, mm-hmm. they'll probably get over it. And if they're not, if you're not depending on them financially, then they really have no say. So you can set that boundary. Like you're not paying for the roof over my head. Like I can make these decisions as an adult. Mm -hmm. So they'll get over it. Okay. So this next one is going to be the last voicemail. So let's get into it. I feel like a lot of the time we know like the steps to take and stuff, but we never like, put it into action. So what would you say, like, would be helpful to start putting things into action or get motivated to do all the stuff that you want to do to help yourself get better? Uh, yeah, that's, that's really it. Um, basically, what works for me is setting little goals to help me get to my big goals. I say little, adjust- little adjustments every day make the biggest difference. So... Every morning, try to make your bed. I'm so serious. It's, I never was, like, up until, like, maybe the past year, I wasn't really making my bed in the mornings. But I've noticed for me, like, at the end of the day, it's so rewarding to, like, get into, like, a fresh, clean, like, made bed. It just feels very rewarding to, and, like, repeat the next day. Um, maybe one day you want to try cooking a new, meal, a new meal or one day you want to try meditating or one day you want to try something new, something every day that will get you to where you want to be. You can't set a big goal and expect to get it ASAP. Like you really have to put the work in. As far as being motivated though, like you really have to ask yourself, do I really want this? Do I really want this thing? And if the answer is yes, then you better get your ass to work, girl. Stop making excuses for yourself. Stop making excuses for the people around you. If you have to cut people off in the process to get to where you want to get, Oftentimes, people around you probably are making you lazy and unmotivated, too. So just really reflect on what is the cause of you not being able to get certain things Hi. done. Hi. Oh. Hello. I'm good. How are you? Oh, my God. Hi. Hi. What's up? No, like, over there. Yeah. It's like a maze in here. Sorry. Oh, what's going on? <laughs> Wait, what's happening? What's up? Our office rat. Yeah, talking to the mic. Oh, I'm really. This is Ian. I'm really stressed. <laughs> I need advice. Why? What's up? Okay, so there's this girl that I know. Can I move this? Yo, I guess so. There's this. G- <laughs> <laughs> there's this girl, and like I know her like really well. Okay, and I did something bad. What did you do? So basically, like, I slept with her boyfriend, and then she like found out that she like. Okay, I slept with her boyfriend, and then she found out that he was cheating, and then she went on, like, an Instagram rampage, and I was like, oh, my God, this is crazy. <laughs> like, she literally found out, but she doesn't know that it was exactly me, and so now I, like, don't know what to do. And I know this girl, like, really well. <laughs> it's just someone I, I knew. I, like, nailed her, like, really well. I feel like you should go, Ian. <laughs> Well, <laughs> what do you think I should do? <laughs> 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 Whoever she is, like <laughs> the guy, though. Yeah, the guy. <laughs> Whoever it was. <laughs> Thank you for calling in, and I hope you stay motivated and get to your goals as soon as possible. Love you. Um, but with that being said, that was the last voicemail. So we are going to close off the first technically episode of nobody makes it out alive. Um, just to 
put this out there we already recorded like three to four episodes before we recorded this one so if there's any confusion in listening to the next few my apologies um we just felt like this one was a little bit more important or urgent timely yeah, yeah it really relates to my life presently right now as we're so soon to the launch date so just to clear any confusion there but Thank you guys so much for listening and I hope you were able to take something out of this podcast and thank you for listening to me and yeah, I love you guys. I hope you have a good day, good rest of your week and stay up girls and boys.